YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and today we're going to take a look inside my 12 gallon tank. Uh, I picked up a fish that I don't see very often in the fish store. It's a peacock gudgeon, and uh, they're also referred to as a peacock goby, and their scientific name is. Well, I can't pronounce that, but I'm going to put it right here. They are very interesting fish, uh, ideal for very small tanks. Uh, they're what's called a nano fish. A lot of there's a lot of fish that kind of fall into that category. They're just very, very, very small fish. Uh, as you might know, a lot of my aquariums are very tiny. I don't have a lot of space for a lot of really huge aquariums, so I keep a lot of really small ones. And uh, I'm trying to breed them inside my 12 gallon tank. Now, I'm going to show you some things that I did to kind of help that along and prepare for them to spawn. So let's take a look. These fish were pretty hard to resist for me because they're very small and very colorful. And as soon as I saw them in my local fish store, I went ahead and bought most of the tank. Uh, I think there were only six in there and I bought four of them. I wasn't sure about the sexual dimorphism of these fish. So uh, I kind of got lucky. I've got three females and one male. Uh, this is the male here. You can tell he's the male because his face is a little bit rounder than the others. I've been feeding them live food and as you can see this blood worm is uh, a little bit much for this guy but I've been feeding them a lot of different things. They come from Papua New Guinea and um, there's a lot of other names for these fish. I was hoping they would spawn right away, but I wasn't sure what to do. I read up on some things and then I discovered them uh, hanging out near the shell and I knew it was time to uh, make some caves for them. They tend to like to spawn in caves. So what I did was I got some thread, I uh, got a little bit of java moss and some tubing left over from uh, the pond project. I think this is like quarter inch tubing. And I decided to just make a little, cut off a little section here. The problem with a lot of these things, I hear they like to spawn in PVC pipes and that sort of thing, but PVC is really ugly in the aquarium. So I decided to kind of make a, a little hidden cave for them. Um, basically, I cut off a small section of the tubing, pulled out some thread, and then proceeded to wrap it with this uh, java moss. Java moss is great for hiding things. Not only is it a live plant that's going to benefit your aquarium, but um, you know, just the water quality, but <laughs> it's really nice and bushy. So you can wrap it around just about anything and uh, it'll just grow and get bigger and bigger. But the uh, this will be a nice way to sort of decorate and provide a cave for the fish and I don't know uh, this cave is a little small for probably most fish for but for these guys it's ideal uh, this java moss seemed to kind of just it would probably just stay on its own but uh, I took some thread here at the end you'll see and wrapped it around also just to kind of give it you know, give it a little bit more stability. Eventually the thread will disintegrate under the water, but this seemed like a nice way to do it. And as you can see, I made a nice little furry cave. <laughs> and uh, this actually is is pretty um, discreet under the in the aquarium. You can barely tell uh, that the pipe's there, at least until you get right up close. And uh, hopefully they like it a lot. I, I wrapped this up with a thread. I just kind of took the thread and wrapped it all the way around. And then I eventually cut it off and uh, tied it up. After that, I just took the little uh, caves. I made two of them. And I just put them in uh, places I thought were most likely to you know, I put one right next to the shell where I saw them kind of hanging out before. And then I stuck another one kind of in the middle of the aquarium. Uh, some things I've read online say that it's good to take the, the cave 
and stick it where of course you can see down into it that way um you can kind of witness the the behavior kind of see if there's something going on in there and uh, also it provides a little bit less of a distraction for the fish because you know the only dis the only thing they see is uh is out of the aquarium so they don't have to see a bunch of other fish and think they have to defend themselves i wasn't sure if they would take to the cave or not but uh it seemed about the right size according to some of the things that i'd seen i also went ahead and started a fry tank now in this tank you'll notice i have um, a box filter and also a uh, sponge filter now the sponge filter is pretty new I don't usually keep those running very often so I bought a new sponge filter and uh, the box filters fully cycled so I'm just kind of letting that cycle up and hopefully they don't spawn too soon because I don't think that box filter would be appropriate inside of there but that just sits under the 12 gallon tank and it's ready to go The male, uh, he seems to be, have been pretty interested in the cave uh, the first day or two. Uh, he sort of relentlessly chases the ladies around. It's almost kind of sad because <laughs> they seem to have almost no interest in him whatsoever. Uh, some other things I've read online say that the male is usually larger than the female, I, I think is what I read. But this guy is really pretty thin. He is eating well, so I think he's okay, but uh, he's a little thinner than than I think uh, they probably should be. And the male, or the females, just seem like they're very plump and ready to go, so uh, hopefully I get something from them soon. The, uh, the male just continuously chases the, the females around, and then eventually... I see this. So hopefully this is the start of a, of a new set of fish. And uh, I guess time will tell. So as you can see, the peacocks are very, very beautiful. Small, small fish. And uh, I'll be sure to follow up if I'm able to get them to spawn. So it'll be a really interesting thing to see. I'd also like to invite you, if you make fish videos for YouTube, to join the Facebook group, YouTube Fish Keepers. It was put together by The Rick, and it's got a, a lot of great people on there. We're all sharing our ideas and thoughts and feelings about uh, keeping fish and shooting videos and all that sort of thing. So please take a look on Facebook. I'll put a link in the description down below. And until next time, I'll see you later.